Vinicius, welcome to Greece. We thank you for talking to MMALegacy.gr. Let's tell the people that you've come here for a seminar with Gracie Barra Greece. How were those two days of the seminar? It was great as always. I, I, I love to come here to Greece. It's actually my 10th time. I'm not sure if the 9th or the 10th. I believe the 10th. And uh, it's great to see the, the technical uh, uh, improvement and developing of the students here. They are in great hands with uh, Harris and Christos and uh, all the other uh, uh, members of the crew and also Professor Alberto Mina doing a great job and helping out a lot too. And uh, we covered the first day no gi and then we covered this day gi. You know, we did a, a lot of new techniques and uh, you know, for now they're going to be a little secret to the big public to make sure that our team gets the edge. But uh, it was great. It was a great time. What's your relation with Grace Ibarra, Greece? Yeah, uh, Christos uh, used to go to Brazil and train with me since 1995, 1996, it was a while ago. And I remember that uh, he came with a wrestling background and martial arts, traditional martial arts background. So it was, uh, he was already a pretty, pretty good guy and pretty tough and learned really fast. And then we got a connection to, uh, uh, through a, a, a common friend, Kaseka Muniz, he's a black belt, third degree too, a student of mine, he used to train with me too. And uh, he said, you know, I love jiu-jitsu, I, I would like to try to implement jiu-jitsu, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu in Greece, and there's none there. So I said, yeah, of course, I can help you out. And then uh, we kind of lost contact a little bit, and then emails here and there. And then in 2002, he invited me to come and teach a seminar to introduce the public about what jiu-jitsu was all about. There was a couple other schools doing kind of like a mystery between uh, traditional jiu-jitsu and other stuff. They were not really, you know, hardcore Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And then uh, I begin to give them a lot of support. They used to go travel to Brazil. I used to come here and they keep training, doing the right thing. Him and Aris was like small group back then. And uh, I always told them, you know, you guys are going to go far. Just believe, keep doing that. what you're doing, that you're going to go far for sure. And look what happens now, you know, the group, uh, the family grows year by year. And uh, a lot of champions coming from there. And I, I, I tell them all the time, you know, I told you, if you stick to what you do, you do good, you're going to be fine. This is the ninth year in a row that you have come to visit us. Have you seen any development of the athletes in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu since the first time of your visit in Greece? Man, definitely. I mean... Actually, every year I see. I wish I could have a videotape to film the guys on the first year, and I'll film the guys on this. I mean, everybody's already with jiu-jitsu incorporated on, the, on their games. It's just a matter now on, on, a, on a have, a, uh, how can I say, a little bit of more uh, improvement and a little bit of more details here and there to make them get the top. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a perfect path and they're doing great. In general, how was Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu when you first started and how has the sport developed so far? Uh, you know, the beautiful thing about Jiu-Jitsu that improves every day. Every day that somebody's on the mat, the art improves. And uh, it's, it's pretty much infinite because there's so many nuances, there's so many things, there's so many situations that can happen in a Jiu-Jitsu training or Jiu-Jitsu match that gets kind of like a an infinite number of uh, new variations, new positions, new new techniques that can happen, especially the gi, you know, because the gi gives you a lot of uh, a lot of options, I would say. And also, I think the, the teachers, most of the teachers do the right thing, is that they, they teach everything that they can to their students in order to make their students better than them. If you want to make your students better than you, the arts, the art will always evolve. If you want to keep secret and not share with your students some certain techniques, you know, the art's going to die away. So I don't think it's the right thing. I think we have a more uh, important goal than just keep Jiu-Jitsu to ourselves. You have to spread to the world. What do the words Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu mean for you? Well, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is my life, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's, it's my, my work, it's my lifestyle, it's, my, uh, it's what calms me down, it's what brings me clarity to think, it's what brought, uh, it's what made me know myself better than anything else. I met my wife and I have my kids because of jiu-jitsu. I mean, you take jiu-jitsu out of me, you take my arms and legs or more. You're teaching over 18 years now, and sure, a lot has happened so far. If I ask you about something that has happened and has remained in your memory, what would it be? So many. 
There's not one specifically. Uh, I've been teaching Jiu Jitsu since 93. So it's already almost 10 years. Uh, 20 years, almost 20 years. I'm a, I'm being a black belt for 16 years. So it's it's gonna be it's, 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 it's for I've been doing this for a while. You know what I mean? Uh, what what I think is that the the, the best thing that jujitsu brought me is uh, that I could change the lives of people for the best. Uh, I, I made a lot of champions, thank God. I made a lot of MMA champions, a lot of uh, you know world champions, Pan American champions, national champions, no gi champions, Abu Dhabi, and you name it. I did all that, but. This is not what makes me more proud, you know. What makes me more proud is that I know that I changed the lives of people that had like a really miserable life, that they had a life that was not good without any confidence, without any health, without anything. And now they have health, they have confidence, they change their life, they have a family, they are strong-minded people. And this is what I think it's the most rewarding thing for me. You've made many good athletes. What makes you so good to produce champions all the time? I don't know, man. I mean... <laughs> And a lot of people ask me, like, uh, you consider yourself a, a, a very good coach or instructor? I would say, yeah, I mean, uh, because I really care about my students and I really care about making, you know, people the best that they can be. It's a natural consequence. If you do with love, I think it's going to happen. I really, I really, again, believe that you have to try to make your students better than yourself. So I teach them the most and I put my heart on them to make them, them better every time. So, I mean... I think I was blessed and lucky too. <laughs> Apart from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you also work in the field of MMA. You even participated in August 2010 in Strike Force. How did you take that decision and return to the cage? Man, uh, MMA was something that I was really, uh, you know, incorporated to my personality. Not that I like to fight or anything, but uh, I think the challenge of being on an extreme situation brings you uh, a, a, a sense of protection and brings you like a necessity to be really ready. And I like that idea. I like to be ready for big challenges. Um, back when I was uh, on my purple, brown belt and, and black belt, it was kind of like a, almost non uh, valetudo or MMA events. So we did a lot of like closed door stuff and a lot of things that were kind of more like, not a street fight, but more like, you know, dojo challenges, stuff like that. We did a lot of those with basically no rules whatsoever. Uh, but then with the de development of the sport, it was something that I really liked. But as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very lightweight, you know. So in the beginning when it was uh, just like any weight, it was open weight class. And for me, I, I couldn't be extremely successful in, in, in a venue like that. I didn't have the size and weight to do. I had the technique, but not the size and weight. So with the improvement of the sport, weight classes came. And I, I, I did, you know, uh, some MMA fights, you know, I, I really liked them, I, lo I, I won some, I lost some, but uh, I trained hard and I got really ready. I couldn't do as many as I wanted to because, unfortunately, I got hurt in a bunch of them. And coming back to Strike Force was great, you know, Strike Force is this, was the second biggest event in the world. I got an invitation to fight in Houston, I live in Houston, Texas now, so it's kind of like they invited me, they, the moment wasn't the best. But they invited me and they, they you know, they, they did a good deal to me and I was like thinking, man, you know, it's not the very best moment, but they, it's like they invited me to a party, they're giving me the best place in the house and I'm not going to go, you know, so I mean, I, I had to go. So I trained hard, you know, I got hurt, like serious injury on my neck, so, but I keep going, you know, I had some help with the doctors, physiotherapists, and I did good, you know, I went by uh, an enemy's decision against a really tough guy, the guy had like 45 MMA fights, tough, tough guy. Uh, I did good, you know, it was great, you know, who knows, maybe this year now. But I, I, I never say never, let's see what happens, you know. <laughs> For this fight, you prepared with the UFC champion Frankie Edgar. We know him from his fights. How is he though in his training, but also as a co-athlete? He was awesome, he was great, man. Frankie is a really, really, really nice guy. Wonderful kid, you know, uh, very humble. He trains more than anybody that I know. He's a machine. You know, he trains every time he doesn't train only on the gym he trains like when he's going to the mall he never takes an elevator he always do the escalator you know he, he's kind of like a hard working in any everything that you know and he's like 
very like one of the best wrestlers I've ever seen. Very strong, very good jiu-jitsu too. He's getting very good and he's, he's brown belt now in jiu-jitsu under uh, Professor Ricardo Almeida, also a fighter in UFC. A uh, good friend of mine since, you know, since I was young. And uh, I had the opportunity to train him and he, we, we, we see each other once in a while. He's a great, great guy. He deserves to be the champion. And uh, it was great for me, you know, uh, training you for the best. You know, uh, I'm not going to be a having any problems, you know, with anybody, I think. So it was great. Who do you believe could win from him the UFC belt? Man, in the UFC now is what I call a shark tank. So many great fighters, you know, like every fight is, is tough. So he's the champion, he proved that he's the best now. He beat BJ Penn, which is maybe one of the best lightweights in history. He beat, he beat him twice, and then he beat uh, Maynard now. Ray Maynard was a guy that beat him before. In my opinion, he beat him on the, on, on, the, on the second fight. They didn't give him the victory, they gave a draw, and then he beat him now by knockout. He was in Houston, actually, in my hometown, so it was great. I was there with him, you know, it was really cool. So uh, I think he is the best lightweight in the world now, yes. But uh, if you ask me if uh, it's going to be impossible for him to lose, I'm going to say uh, no. You know, he, he can lose like anybody else can lose too. So uh, I just think that he works harder than other people and he is in the, in the, in the level that's a little uh, above everybody else. But uh, it depends on the day. Like I said, man, like now, nowadays MMA is such a high level that, you know, anything can happen.